All right, everyone, welcome back to the things we know. This whole mm -hmm. month, we're going to be doing fun. I mean, I want to say lighthearted, but some of the, even the fun books we're reading and those shows we're watching and the movies we're, we love aren't exactly like cotton candy, but still we're doing, trying to do kind of what they, what would you call it? Like beachy reads, beachy pods for July. I don't know. I think, <laughs> I, I, I think um, I wasn't like, I, I like that you're as intentional. I wasn't as intentional when we were thinking of these things. I think I just was like, it's it interest. I find it really interesting and I love it when people I'm listening to and I like tell me what they're reading and what they're mm -hmm. thinking about what they're watching because it um it expands you know it's people I already trust so it expands right. my repertoire and I don't have a lot of time you know I used to always read you know um the New York Times every Sunday about like you know what to watch and like what what to read and now I just rely on my people to tell me <laughs> Well, and we're also in a completely different world where everything is literally at our fingertips. We can binge yes. something. We can, there's everything's, you know, the streaming. I mean, there's literally, it's so funny when we sit down to watch something at night, you know, Darren, Charlotte and I, which is, you know, we, we always think, okay, we're going to sit down as a family. We're going to have dinner and watch something. Inevitably, we're done with dinner before we've had it, come to a consensus. You know, it's, oh, yeah. just, it's so hard. I miss um, but the it's always we like, all agreed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's so rare, but it's like, okay, we decide on a movie. Like, what did we decide on the other night? Um, I can't remember. We were trying to watch some like graduation movies, and uh, it wasn't book smart, but it was something else. And Darren's like, okay, make sure you look everywhere to see if it's free. So it's like Prime, Hulu, Tubi, um, Apple, Netflix. Max, like it takes 15 minutes just to go find the damn show or movie that we want to watch. It's ridiculous. The, the, <clears throat> yeah, I do miss the simplicity of yeah, three channels, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> three channels in HBO. And, and I don't, yeah, you, you got to run to the bathroom during the commercial because there's yes. no problem. A little bit of exercise there in between. So yeah. today we are going to talk about the shows that we have been watching and they're not always current. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, and we'll end with the, our favorite of the time right now, uh, which is should be nobody's surprise. Um, but why don't you start? What's what are you watching right now? That well, you okay, so I'll, I'll I'll work backwards. I'll start with the most current. But um, Peter, it, my oldest, is home. I love watching things with him. I have a great track record. Um, just my kid's whole life of recommending shows or movies, and and the reverse is true also. Mm -hmm. you know like we've you know like beef is something I watched last year and absolutely loved and that mm -hmm. was like my kids watched it first because they're big fans of A24 so yeah. um I had thought about and heard about Severance and then um, Peter's like let's watch that so we um we were just I think five episodes in um mm -hmm. and it's really good it's really good That's I like Adam Scott I like I like mm -hmm. Turo, I like Patricia Arquette. I mean, it's a great cast. Even you know, it's got um Christopher Walken in it. I love the cast. I love the premise. I think it's fascinating, and I feel like oh, this is funny because we also our podcast is on Apple um, Podcasts as well as other platforms. But Peter made a great point. Like it's funny how very obviously anti corporate it is <laughs> on Apple. Yeah. But you know, like there's a great message there um, in terms of you know just morality and also you know like uh, just the question of would you want to be severed from your work life would you want to separate those parts of your life but the, obviously the deeper message is just the just the underbelly of big companies and the harm they can do so it, it's it's interesting I I, I can tell if there's going to be like my boggling things revealed you can tell it's being set up for that and it's so creepy but I it's like it's very it. creepy <laughs> honestly when my kids want to spend time with me to watch something there's almost nothing I would say no to and sorry Darren I probably would say no to horror but just because late at night it's hard for me to go to sleep after that yeah <laughs> but well there's not too I mean I guess we want Charlotte's kind of go back to oddly a comfort movie which shows that or a comfort show which shows you that she is Darren's daughter is American Horror Story Murder House. Mm -hmm. So she will go back and watch that. Um, I watched Murder House and then I never watched anything else other than the episodes that she was in from 1984. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I liked Severance. Um, I did to me, it's so interesting that you did it about, you You focused on the work piece, which is clear. 
But to me, it's he's severing from his real life because of yes. grief. Well, yes, I was saying that the question was there, like just in general, but you're right. His reason for doing it um, is to not feel what he's in feeling in world. his personal life yeah. from yeah. the real world. And um, and the whole reason that I think this is even an option is because they do not want they do not want their employees remembering or being knowledgeable or spreading what they're doing on the inside. You're so, right. Um, so I, I just... And I like the point that's made pretty early on. So I don't think it's a spoiler is I don't, you know, even if you don't remember, I think you still come in with that pain. You just don't know it, you know, right. like you're holding the pain, which obviously makes sense. Uh, you know, it's fascinating to me to watch right. the dynamics there. Well, and I think that what you just it's said. It's so visually gorgeous too. It's, oh, it's almost it's like some of, the, so many of the frames are, are Wes Anderson like, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I do love Adam Scott, um, and he's in one of my shows as well. But I, uh, yeah, that's interesting. You're right. It's it's funny why each one of them has severed, um, and but you learn early on about Adam Scott severing because of grief. Um, but you're right. The actual reason to that the company wants them to sever is they don't want them to go out and talk about what they're doing although you never know what the fuck they're doing you have no clue what they're doing on the inside so mm -hmm. um yeah that's a good one um, it, is, it is fascinating too just the long 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 hallways it's yes. just so well and done it, yeah. i was gonna say and it's so well done because it is it's these long like very um nothing shots right they're just in these hallways and yet they're it's still so it draws you in What's also fascinating too is um, he's not treated well. He is treated mm -hmm. really badly, and yeah. yet he doesn't remember it when he leaves, and so he right. keeps coming back. And yeah, I think that's a fascinating thing because you would we're not severed, and sometimes we do that anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, well, I will do an up a lighthearted version of Adam Scott then, uh, mm -hmm. which I binged loot over uh, my- Oh, he's apartment. in that. I didn't know he that. He is. He is. He's he's a, it's it, Maya Rudolph is the main character. Um, we were talking about this before we got on. Like I had watched Palm Royale with Kristen Wiig because I fucking love her. I also love Maya Rudolph, but I think I love her more now than I ever have because I, after watching Palm Royale, which was interesting and also gorgeous, set in Palm Beach, but it just and it's the '60s and it's all the I love Alice and Janney too. Yes, it's Alice good. and Janney, Dayton represent. Um, all like just it's gorgeous. It's okay. It's good. I enjoyed it, but it and I'll if there's a second season, I will watch it. Um, Ricky Martin is fantastic in it. Uh, Laura Dern's great, but I, somebody I read somewhere that said if you liked. Paul Morial, obviously, see loot. And so I thought, okay, what the hell? Oh my God. I laughed out loud every single episode of loot. I, it was the, the premise is Adam Scott and Maya Rudolph are married. Adam Scott's kind of a, <laughs> it, well, I mean, yes and yes and no. I mean, I think it, it, the, the way you read about it in the papers, it's supposed to sort of look like um, Jeff Bezos, right? So uh adam scott but he's in but adam scott's character is in the tech industry and he and maya rudolph he's cheating on her so they this is all in the first episode i'm not blowing anything and so they divorce and she finds out all this time she's had a um uh what do you want to say a foundation and so she decides well i'm going to go in and i'm going to work at this foundation and and so you get to meet all this cast of characters headed up by Jay Rodriguez. I think she goes by Michaela J. Rodriguez now from Pose. Such a girl crush on her. Oh my God. She's so good in this. It's so different from Pose. She is just so funny. And all the just little cast of characters. Um, and it's it's just funny. And it's half hour, you know, and it's yeah. just, it's just fun. It was a fun binge. I actually thought there were three seasons. So I was just like zippity doo don through. And then I realized it was only two and I was so bummed. I <laughs> know. Oh, shit, it's over. <laughs> I know. I was just realizing that Severance came out in 2022 and it doesn't have a second season yet. <laughs> no, but I, because of the, um, the writer's, writer's strike. strike. Yeah. But they are coming back with a second season. So yeah. yeah so I, from a lighthearted perspective, I loved Loot.
Well, I'll have to check that out. I do love yeah, Rudolph. I've always loved her. She's so oh, if you, I mean, you will love her even more. She is so good in this. She's funny and self-deprecating and clueless because she is a billionaire, right? And mm -hmm. but she, but it's it's sort of new money. It's tech money, right? So it's funny that the one thing, and they don't really address it, but the one thing I kept thinking is like, you didn't grow up this way. So like, how are you so entrenched in being a billionaire? You know, like at one point, it's so it's not even a thing. You see her pouring Perrier into her dog's um, dishes. That's the dog water is Perrier. Her dogs are named Mary Kate and Ashley. They also that's twins. Hilarious. That is so <laughs> So good. it's just like, it's, and I, and I just, that's the one thing I kept thinking, like, how are you already like this? So, 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 so good at sourcing. So I, good. I love that. So good. It's well, that's a good recommendation. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I'm, I'm not that far into it, so I don't have as much to say about it, but visually it's gorgeous, is the 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 version of Shogun that's out. I can't mm. remember which channel we're watching it on. Brendan and I, it's so hard for Brendan and I to get through something together because like that. our schedules, but um, it's gorgeous. I remember watching that in the 80s with Richard Chamberlain. I was going to say, did you watch I it? I did I read the book. That was quite a feat. Did you I really? feel like I did it impressed my dad but I ended up really loving it um <laughs> but it. so far like it's violent it's incredibly mm. violent it is so badass um it's, in, but it's a also, woman in this one right uh I got no spoilers <laughs> um it's a very um it's interesting just to watch all the cultural differences that are wow. happening there it's 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 really well done but I'm not that far in um the other thing we started watching that I think we're like halfway through is the um, Beckham. Um, oh yeah, documentary. Not because it's taking us a while. It's just because you know we want to finish watching it together. So yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like if we really want to watch something, we just watch it separately and then we check in about it. But this, oh, is, this is fun. Um, yeah, it's good. I I have such an appreciation. I never really. I wasn't like the hugest fan of. Um, European soccer sorry I, I love a lot of people who are I can appreciate it I, I you know I'm a fan of like my local MLS team but right. I can appreciate and understand like that when he came to the U.S. to play for LA like that that elevated everything for us here so I appreciate that mm. I didn't know a ton about him and I I I loved Spice Girls but I didn't like fan them or anything I just right. thought they were right. awesome and fun and so watching them like that whole thing just was kind of like I know it was kind of cute and pretty, but I didn't pay attention to it. So I had no idea what he went through mm. and that I didn't, you know, I, I think of English soccer fans as just the most extreme. And so I didn't know that it was extra extreme with Argentina, their rivalry. Yeah. So that when he got that red card in that game, that the whole country um, blamed him and he was pretty young. He was 23 and he was abused. He was broken by that. And like the coach and even the, even Tony Blair, the prime minister, they all kind of, you know, expressed disappointment in him. Nobody, nobody really held him up there except for her. Mm. And, uh, and that's, and he wanted, you know, he, he didn't grow up with a lot of friends. He grew up really close to his family, he grew up pretty poor. He was focused on soccer. And so once he started dating her, like he was in, he was just loyal. He wanted to start having kids right away. He wanted his kids to grow up with him in his career. And they did get three boys and then later a girl. So just learning that about them and seeing their dynamic and knowing it's been 25 years gave me a mm -hmm. total appreciation for them. Like as parents, as business people, as like, style icons and I'm not even all the way through it but um I, I, it was it's super enjoyable and if for nothing else I love the Cockney accent it's so it's so fun to listen to and it is really fun adorable too and then I heard him on Smartlist mm. uh, and so down to earth so mm -hmm. like really really funny and um and, and self-aware so I, I that, that was enjoyable I love that. I um I also don't really follow European football, soccer, whatever other, uh, but I, I love soccer. And so, you know, you and I have both watched Wrexham. That has been fascinating. I love that. I show. love Wrexham. And I think, and so I will definitely watch Beckham. You mentioned that the other day when we were talking, I didn't even know it existed. And then I saw a billboard for it. I was like, Ooh, I gotta, I gotta watch that. Um, yeah, I like you. I think we were kind of too old for the Spice Girls. I liked a few of their songs. I still like a few of their songs. But really, when you think about the fact that they are still together, that is 
fucking amazing. But I then, as you were saying that, it is because they're both famous, right? And hugely famous. But when I think about all, that's one of the things I love about Wrexham is all this, the behind the scenes stories about these families. You know, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but like that story about the the guy who came to work for Rex, play for Wrexham and then his wife got sick and Wrexham I gave know. him the time off and then he came back and I won't say what he did, but it was pretty awesome. And so, you know, I, I think I it'll be interesting for me to watch that not only in the context of, you know, Victoria and, and David Beckham, but knowing, having watched that experience through Wrexham as well and to see, you know, what the wives, you think, oh, a footballer's wife, you know, like I remember there was a show on mm. television several years, uh, God, probably 20 years ago called The Footballer's Wives. I fucking love that show. And it, but it was a drama or it was a fiction. Um, but you think, okay, like basketball players or football players or, but you think about footballers' wives, and you think, right. oh, they've just got it made. No, I mean, a lot of no. them they're living. They have to move. A lot. Paycheck. They got to move. Maybe they don't want to move because their kids are in school, so the husbands no. and wrecks them, and they're in London, and you so know, so great that they like. And and I mean, if you love either of these actors or both, like I do, I love. I've always been an it's always sunny fan. I love Rob McElhaney. This was his baby, his idea, and he brought in. Um, Ryan Reynolds to help fund it and the, yeah. their friendship and the way they oh. their self-deprecating way of just making fun of themselves and each other and like the gags they pull and then how like the British people on the ground they have to deal with it and babysit them and like you know it's at so the great beginning. It's at so the funny. beginning they really well, in hold their season, own in, in second season there's a lot of funny things that happen where they're like oh my gosh Rob you know wants to rent a blimp to that's like, right for there. Ryan's birthday right and like it causes all this stuff or he just puts on his phone a game and there's all these rules against it you know like, and they're yeah. like hey. um that that part's all really funny but you're right it's it's like the player with the autistic son and the and yeah. the attention they give to all the disabled um fans um yes. and and how they even hire um an employee who's who who is in charge of like making sure it's all very accessible and that there's a league for like accessible mm -hmm. league hugely important to me my son is on the special olympics team um for the our local mls team and i i'm so touched and honored by that they didn't they don't and, and in the second season like there's a lot of attention given to how badass the women's team is yes um, so it's and i like they are here in the states uh -huh. mm -hmm. um actually i will say i went to a thorns game recently with my friend cheryl and three nights later four nights later i went to a timbers game with um griffin and the Thorns game, of course, it was a Saturday, was completely filled, completely full. And it was a badass game. They won. It, it, those women are so good. And the Timbers game was really dull, really boring. We were losing. And then we came back and we won. But that stadium was never filled. Yeah. I mean, but, the women, women's soccer here in the States, I think, does way better. And, I agree. Yeah. Um, no, I, no I drama, agree. Nice drama. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think... Um, you how you said something and I can't remember where I was gonna go. I just I I just absolutely adore Rex. And that is one of those shows you talk about seeing things with Darren and I very rarely watch things together because he doesn't really like to watch serial things because it he just doesn't want to take the time. He's always doing five thousand other things. Um and and Rexham's nice because he likes it, but he'll just pop in when he needs to or I, and so I can kind of catch him up. Um yeah, it's it's it is such a fun show, and they, it's so well done because it's not about Ryan and Rob. It is well, about the about the the city. You know, it's yeah, about Wrexham and insane. everything that's in there. It's a great it's a great example of like where a TV show made lives better because the second season you come back and they're all dealing with infamy and some of the people who saw themselves on film are healthier and they're doing yes. better yes you know, i love that great story like, oh yeah you know like those that that is just incredible to watch how it's elevated businesses and self-esteem and connections yeah. and just you know and how it's spilled over into other um, teams in that league it's it's cool yeah it is cool i um i i, I know what i was gonna say it i i've I haven't joked about this here, but, you know, I've done um, Ancestry.com, really hoping on God's green earth that I was Irish. I am not. I am everything, but I am British and I am Scottish. 
but now I'm embracing my Welsh. So now, because of Wrexham, now I'm just like, yeah, I'm Welsh. Well, that's <laughs> I'm amazed. At, like I, I've been there. I've been to Wales and and watching the show. I'm always amazed at how well I thought Scottish was hard to hear. I it was really oh. hard times to hear somebody who with a Welsh accent. You're like yeah. what? But they 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 definitely caption it when it's hard. And I love when they show the what a word means and what what a definition is the word in Britain, the word in That's America, so and the word in in Wales. That's always funny. Oh, um, okay. Okay, so kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum for me, uh, I but I think equally interesting and important and also has gotten lost in some ways, the importance of this, in my opinion, um, was Baby Reindeer. That was something mm -hmm. Darren absolutely didn't want to watch. He doesn't want to watch anything that's a bummer, which is, horror is not a bummer to him. And it, it's not a bummer usually, but um, something like this that, that is real life he can't really handle so i binged that pre-surgery everything's pre and post-surgery but um i so baby radio i'm not going to blow anything about it although probably most of you have watched it the reason i think i haven't it is a, i haven't a lot of people haven't but i do know everyone who the, the people who have watched it loved it yeah it's love is a weird word because it is a hard watch it is definitely something I won't watch again mm. um, just because I don't think I can. It's like watching Leaving Las Vegas or something oh, like yeah. that, that you just, it's like, holy shit. Um, I didn't really know what it was about. Um, I think, you know, probably everybody knows to so that it's about this guy and his stalker. Right. Um, and it's and a true course, story. And it's a true story. Wasn't and it like a one man show that he wrote? Yeah. So okay. originally it was a one man show and then Netflix picked it up and and then he claims he tried to hide everybody's sort of um, identity. And but they have found the woman that is the stalker. And she, now that's the big brouhaha. Right. Like of she keeps saying, I'm that's not me, blah, blah, blah. I would argue if you watch after the show, if you watch Piers Morgan, it's her. But um, it's it, what I did not know, truly. And I don't know how I missed this, but I'm sort of glad I did. I did not realize that the main actor is the guy. And mm. so Sh Charlotte walks in one day. She's like, oh, I really want to watch Baby Reindeer. And I was like, great, you can do this by yourself because I'm not going to watch it again. It's fantastic, but I'm not going to watch it again. And she's like, yeah, that's the guy. And I was like, no, it's not. And then I looked it up. I was like, holy shit, it was. And unfortunately, I learned that right before what I would consider the toughest episode. Mm. And so then that made that episode even more uh, intense for me. But I, the bottom line is, and why I think it's an important watch, is it really illustrates abuse and what abuse does to you. You know, we... Um, I think we're better now, but I think there's still that prevailing thought of if you're in an abusive relationship, why do you stay? And, and because he was abused, he, he keeps the cycle with her going with Martha, mm -hmm. the person, and he stays in an abusive relationship. And so, and you can, and, and so it's fascinating to watch that play out. Um, plus he has a relationship with a trans woman that is really heartwarming and real. And, and, and so I just think, while I don't think I, I should say, ne I never say never. I don't think I would watch it again. Um, I am so glad I watched it. And I really, really think we, if we could let go of the, um, uh, sensationalism of the story mm -hmm. and that it's true and that this woman has been found and really just watch the story. It's incredibly powerful and important, I think, to say. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I would say, un, I mean, it's not totally different from Darren. When I was thinking of watching it, when I was um, recommended and I was thinking of it, we we got some really like hard news and I wasn't sleeping great. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to stay away from the darkness yeah, yeah. for now, but I, I will get to it. I yeah, will. It's not going but anywhere. I do like the gritty stuff. I love, like I said, I loved beef. Like I, I loved, I, I loved haven't seen that. Oh, you will love it. Okay. It's well done. It's, it's 
really one of the best things, you know, in that whole award circuit. It won everything. It won everything. Yeah. So good. It's so good. You will love it. It's funny because I guess we can get to the bear. We can talk about other things. But we, you mentioned like some things aren't so recent. I have a way of going back to things that people were always wanting me to watch and I didn't get to. Um, one thing I, I did mention one thing to you, but one thing I may not have mentioned to you is after Matthew Perry died, I um, I kept meaning to look at Studio 60 again because I remember watching it a little oh, bit yeah. and it didn't last because Aaron Sorkin, brilliant writer, you know, obviously has his own struggles and he doesn't, I mean, he did such a great job with West Wing. I loved it. Yeah, he did yeah. Sports Night. I thought Sports I Night was so Sports funny. Night. Um, Studio 60, I thought was just so good. Like Sarah hmm. Paulson. Um, I, I thought it was so good, but I remember I just didn't, you know, Amanda Peet, um, yeah. Bradley Whitford, all of them. Um, I, I just didn't finish it and I went back and it's only a season, but it is so good. It's huh. so well done. The, um, What's all it on? Characters, I found it on, on Amazon prime. I think okay. I didn't have to pay for it. So it okay. was, you know, anyway, so good. Um, and, and like, I tend to do that, but I don't like sit and watch it. I will kind of have it on like I would a podcast or something. And so like there's things over time that my friends like, it's so funny. I've been telling you to watch that forever. And now you're finally getting to the good life or parenthood or Friday night lights. Like I will go back and watch those things years after everyone. Was yeah. Watching them. <laughs> and, um, and it just like kind of annoys people, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know why it, it's it's usually like a new show like be for the bear or something or even succession I will mention I know you finished succession and you loved it Miles and I try to get through it but I can't binge that one because no so awesome. oh yeah no I could not binge that but like I said like I, I'm fine with them gritty I'm fine it's just they're so it's like such awful behavior that even though some of it's really funny um mostly it's like oh. no 100 percent so, we both were determined this summer to like, we're going to finish it, but, um, but it, there's things that take me a while to get yeah. through. And then other things like, Oh my God, I got to watch it all and like get through it. And I love it. Like beef. I, I watched really, really close together. Cause I, I wanted to see what was going to happen next. Succession was weird because I, I'm like you, I, I, I typically don't jump on a bandwagon. Um, I don't, and I, and I feel sort of proud of that. It's a stupid vanity. I'm not going to lie. Cause then inevitably the people that are telling me to watch something I trust and believe in. And, and so when I watch it, I'm like, why did I take so long? Um, succession though, was funny. Cause I watched the first season and then I watched the second season and the second season, there was a couple episodes in there that were hard to watch. And so then I was like, I can't, I don't think I can do this. And then I decided to pick it back up during the third season and I thought I hadn't watched the second season so I went back and rewatched the whole second season but it was a little weird because I didn't I was like there were moments where I thought oh oh yeah I have seen this and I was like no have I seen this so I think there is something I'm not gonna lie this sounds overly exaggerated but there is something a little bit traumatic about watching Succession like I really there oh, were things sure. I had forgotten because I was like, this, I did, ah, you know. For sure, the the emotional neglect and abuse is is really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and also and, knowing that again, this is I know it's completely fiction, but we know there are families in that upper echelon. Uh, I'm looking at you, Fox News, that yeah. are like this, you know. And it's just so you think, okay, yes, these people aren't real, but there's somebody out there that's real like this. Yeah, oh, yeah. my husband and I are always like Kendall's so cringy, and uh, I also Roman. love Kendall though. I know. Well, you love you, well. I don't love him all at all, but I love um, uh, Kieran Culkin though. He's my babe. I know he's he's so good. He's I so good. Him. I love him. But every scene with um, Greg and Tom makes me laugh so hard oh my God. because they're just so ridiculous. So ridiculous, and I oh. I love Greg because we've been watching him since he was in uh, Sky High. Was it oh. Sky High? I think that's the one he was in. It was either that or the one with Tim Allen. I can never remember, but I just feel I'm like- I'm really curious if he's as tall as he seems. He seems Oh like yeah, that. I think he's like six, seven. Yeah, oh he's God. actually ginormous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Perks of a Wallflower. That's the movie I was talking about the other night, oh, yes. trying to find it. And he's in that too. He's in, that's that guy's really in that. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so speaking of, okay. I didn't think it was because you were avoiding being on the bandwagon. I thought it was because Darren doesn't like cereal that I kept going, how come you're not watching the bear? And you're like, everyone's telling me to watch the bear. Darren doesn't like, you know, um, serious TV. It was both like, of those things probably. And yet 
he has watched the bear. We both watched both seasons twice. Uh, he was the first one to text me, the whole family going, season three is out June 27th. Yeah, that <laughs> so, was Peter you know. texting us. Peter and Miles watched the first season before we did. And we had, Brendan and I had the same response. You did it first, but like in that you prepared Liam for it. It's like, it's frenetic at first. You kind of got to get through the stress. It. Yeah. It's so well done. But it's, a, and then, oh my God, once you do, you're hooked. Yeah. It, the first episode, I, I, I was like, I don't think I can keep watching this. I, I like these people, but the, the, it, the, energy is frenetic's a perfect word i felt anxiety i felt this heaviness on my chest and we thought okay now let's just try again and then what's interesting is we watched the whole first season and then charlotte wanted to watch it so we went back and watched it with her and it was so much more enjoyable because we are a we already knew what was happening but b because we knew the energy of it, we actually could see funny things that we didn't see the first time. Like I, I know you talked about a quote and you can say it here in a second, but like, to me, when we watched the bear the first time around, it was a drama. When we watched it the second time around, it was completely a comedy. <laughs> I mean, we laughed so hard watching it the second time. I just, I love Ebon. Like, oh, I want him in my life as a real human I being. I love him I so much. I love Richie. <laughs> It, I don't know if you ever watched um, Rescue Me. I, I've i watched episodes of it. Gosh, that was when I just, I mean, I couldn't binge watch back then, but I think we had like the DVDs or something. I don't know. And that that kind of reminded me of this, where like that is like post 9-11, like all the dark shit right. that happens to the, the, the ones that are left behind and they lost yeah. all these people while on the job and they're all fucked up and there's no redeeming characters. Whereas actually that's not true of the bear, but um, right but you root for them and it's also so funny their dynamics as yeah. like a firehouse but, you know peter tolan and um, dennis leary writing it dennis leary, yeah. so um that that's what this reminds me of because this, this is really compelling characters they're they're so about like the emotional intensity of not just like family dynamics shit that's yeah. there but like just economic and the uh, uh, you know with chicago as a backdrop and the the funny like cousin thing that happens all the yeah. time with people when they're not really cousins and yeah. uh, uncles and stuff like that like all of that that stuff's so freaking funny and I've worked um in food service and so I know I know that too like I've, I've seen the intensity where people will you know like they have no semblance of a life but they're like really good in this one lane but then yeah. they're also like really stressed and you're like why are you doing this yeah. so like all of that stuff comes together and I I love the combination of the heartbreak and the hilarious it's really yeah. good it's yeah really I good. mean it's, it's and it's funny because I think the reason I finally talked Darren into it and this is why it works for the, you know, we were just saying it's so hard to find something for the three of us um, but I love Ebon. He has had a lifelong, her lifelong crush on Abby Elliott. He just loves Abby Elliott, has always loved right. her since SNL. And then of course, Charlotte's all about Jeremy. So the between the three of us, we're just like, yeah, we love all of them. Um, and of course, the Chicago piece. I mean, it's so representative of Chicago. It's my side of Chicago. I'm not, I'm, I'm I lived on the North side. I know that area. I know exactly um, the Chicago dramatist where Darren first started writing his plays is right in that neck of the woods. And so, you know, where we have watched other Chicago things, um, we always <laughs> joke about watching, uh, I can't even remember the movie, but, you know, so often we watch something in Chicago and we're like, nah, that doesn't happen. We have yet to see something in the bear that hasn't been right, you know. Oh, that's um, cool. Because yeah. I have a friend from Chicago who she points out little things. Like, the highway wouldn't go this way, it would go that way. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't know. But um, it's like, it, I wish Miles was here for this because he's so good at, like, capturing. And, you know, this is just kind of a hobby thing of his, like, to understand directors and the way people mm. do things. He, if he could get a job putting together the soundtrack and also creating some of it himself, composing some... He loves what they do with like as, as like I feel like the soundtrack is another character in this show for sure. Yeah. But what he always describes is like they go like 
in. They zoom in for all the frenetic intensity yep. and like they build that stress and then they zoom out for these very long, awkward, emotional pauses. Yep. And they do that so well. They go in and out. And um, and once you get that, like you live for it, right? Like yeah. you absolutely live it. And what I love is the character arcs of each person are phenomenal. So well, phenomenal. so full. Some of them aren't in the forefront, but they're still going on. And so mm -hmm. you, you like seal it and then some like, it, it's just so so good and what I was gonna say was something my son showed me which was you know this this weird arbitrary categorization during the award season where bear gets put as a comedy and secession gets put as a drama and they're really just a half an hour or an hour version of the same thing like intense yeah. emotional True. extreme unhealth you know like unhealthy yeah. extreme emotional like dynamic around these these characters like in their arcs and some of them are on like an upward arc you know like in the bear and in succession you're not so sure some of them are spiraling down but um there can be there can be humor and and what um I don't know you say his name really well when it plays Ivan. Ivan he said you know it's really just about the heartbreak and the hilarity of humanity right yeah. and and like that's what we're capturing here and blue yeah. collar right versus i mean yes right. you know uh carmen comes from a high-end restaurant but you know it's blue collar versus white white right. collar in only, succession he only comes from there because of feeling neglected and ignored right. and he's trying to get the attention of the yeah. big brother so that's the funny thing is he just went out and punished himself to be successful yeah and you know the emmys have only uh, have only recognized season one so i am dying to see what happens for season two because i'm telling you what there's no way in hell jamie lee curtis isn't want winning for fishes oh my Holy gosh that's shit the other thing about this show and, and there's other shows like this it's not just this one but the, one of my favorite things about season two was all the guest spots yeah. that you hear about those actors like oh what's the guy's name he was in he was in um guardians of the galaxy and he plays that chef that's in um Copenhagen when what's his name oh, goes, the, he, oh what's his name that guy that actor you know he he plays he's pictured with Jeremy Allen White's character at some point but he comes in and he plays a chef and he said he went he begged to be on the show and he went to um you know to study with a chef just so he could have that opportunity yeah and then to like Olivia Coleman like there's yeah. so many amazing guest spots and that's such a great, that's such a great testament to a show that, that other people are like, I want to be in this. I'll do anything like John Mulaney uh, and Sarah that Paul. Fishes is, is off the chain. I mean, it is so intense. And that, that was the one I said to Liam, cause he had watched it. And I said, um, you know, you should, when you get to fishes, it's, it watch it once <laughs> because it's, although I say that we've watched it like three times. And every time, even though I exactly what's going to happen, I still, again, the anxiety I am feeling through that entire thing, watching her cook. And then you come back and you get Forks. And I mm -hmm. think Forks is one of the most beautiful episodes of television ever. I have ever seen. Ever. Yes. Ever seen. It's so yeah. good. Did oh. you, speaking of beautiful episodes of television ever, did you ever watch, what was the one... My gosh, what's the one that's based on a video game with Pedro Also, Pascal. I just want to say the fact that I even know the names of these, I never know the names of episodes. Who knows know. the names of episodes? But that is a testament to no, this true. show or to those it's two true. episodes in particular. Well, I don't know what the rest of them are called. Well titled. Yeah, they're well titled. Um, uh, what is it? The one with Pedro Pascal and- Oh, um, The Last of Us? The Last of Us. Speaking of, and I'm yeah, so glad I, I got watch that. It. The Last Emmys was the most beautiful hour of television. I know, I need to watch that unbelievable and I was so happy when Nick Offerman won yeah um, so when you said that that reminded me yes those two hours of television are so beautiful like that that episode of um of that episode seven about Richie and then mm. that one with the last of us I just remember being like everyone should see these yeah you've been telling me that for ever since it came on and I keep meaning to and then it slips my mind because I tried to watch the last of us and I just couldn't get into it but I know you say that's a standalone so I will definitely watch that yeah, and then by myself, and no one else is watching. So, um, anything else? Did we hit all the things we said we were going to talk about? I'm sure there's so much more we could, but no, it's okay. Oh, I will say, I don't know if I told you this, but I watched um, when I was in the mental house and I couldn't sleep. I watched a documentary on, about the making of We Are the World. Um, I did too. That was amazing. So good. 
I have so good extra appreciation for Lionel Richie. Not that I didn't need it, not that I needed it, but I was like, I had no idea how much he was doing that one night. I and know it was crazy. I also assumed that they were like lucky to pull Michael in, and it was why he taped in another room. I did not know he and Lionel like wrote the whole thing, and that like, he orchestrated all of it and stepped out for some of it so someone else could step in and. All I the knew he wrote it. And like, yeah, sweet, sweet description of Bruce just kind of driving up in his own car in a t-shirt and walking in by himself. Like that, that's so our era. And just to like, I thought, oh, this could be a cheesy thing to watch. It was fascinating. It was. It was. Really uh, yeah. It's, I think it's called the greatest night in the, of the greatest night of music or something like that. It is so good. I knew Michael and Lionel had written it together and I knew Quincy was involved. Like I knew the, but I, you know, being the person I am, I was not a fan of We Are the World. Like it was a, to me, it was a bastardization of, of, yes. you know, w- yes. what it the, was. I mean, it, 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 totally it totally was. It totally was. But I loved like Bob Geldof coming in and giving them the pep talk and watching each individual person and watching them fan over each other, you know. Oh, so um, watching we actually, um, Billy Joel fan over Ray Charles was adorable. Yes, that was so cute. And Diana and Ross with Daryl Hall. That was so cute. It, I mean, D- Diana Ross was adorable. Huey Lewis and the whole piece with him and Cindy Lauper and Kim Carn. Like, I, we, Darren and I watched it together. And then we, Charlotte was in the middle of, well, I mean, she was doing, I think, everything she's been doing this year, singing, that Darren said to her, you don't have to watch this whole thing, but I want you to watch especially once it was the individual singers, like bringing in Bob Dylan. And he's like, I want you to see this piece of it. Cause I'm curious if this is how it is when you guys are, cause she's in a vocal jazz group. So having different people sing different parts and, you know, they, they talk about how people didn't get parts because of who they were. They got parts because of how they sang, you know? Mm-hmm. So if, if somebody has got a higher voice, they might get a, a role that you would think, Oh, Michael Jackson. Well, no, that's a bad example. <laughs> he has a high voice. But like you would think, oh, that he only has this tiny piece. Well, that's because that's where he fits in the range, or she fits yes. in the range of the song. Yeah. So watching them puzzle it together. That struggle of like so egos interesting. and puzzling and also, you know, what was happening with Prince and Sheila E and all that. Yes, that, was that was sad. I thought it was really sweet to see how Ray Charles took a very shy and kind of insecure Dylan and like got yes. him feeling like good and laughing about his part I thought that was yeah. really sweet yeah all of it I, I, I want to like who who doesn't love watching famous people fan over other famous people it's just it's kind so of funny cute. yeah it's so cute <laughs> well, that was a good ending to that yeah but uh yeah so that is and so you know uh, on the line of uh music we picked a song we automatically went to the bear soundtrack because again we just talked about it like the soundtrack of the bear it's not all chicago i mean yes there's some lots of wilco in there and but there's crowded house there's rem i mean it's it's such a great companion to whatever is happening they have the music uh producer or uh, there's a word for it darren would know if I, i can't remember but there's actually a job of the person that goes out and gets the music and gets the rights it is so well done for the bear um that was one such job if anyone's hiring yeah i really <laughs> seriously it, it, side note nobody needs to know this but i'm gonna say it on the pod anyways darren knows some people it's a music supervisor i think is the title yeah. and darren does know somebody here in la so he can hook miles up to talk to well, him all right he's a really nice guy that was a total side note that was just for Gary and I, but anyway, this is what we take care of a lot in one conversation. It's all yeah, good. right. Okay, so we picked from the Bear soundtrack. There's no better song, in my opinion, to pick than Chicago from Sufjan Stevens. Um, this comes from the album Illinois, which happens to be on Broadway right now. Um, it is up for a Tony. We have the pleasure of knowing the mom of the woman who is the uh, costumer for Illinois, which is very fun. Um, This is an album that means a lot to Liam and I. We really fell in love with this album as we were leaving Chicago and moving to L.A. So it was a a go to for us, for sure. And I hope it's, it's on Liam and I's bucket list to see Sufjan someday. We made the mistake of walking away from his show at Pitchfork and we have uh, rude the day ever since. He wasn't doing Illinois, so we, that's our one caveat. So this song is Chicago. 
Uh, it was actually also the theme song of Be that uh, the politician that Ben Platt was in. It's such a good song. But here's the lines, the opening lines. I fell in love again. All things go. All things go. Drove to Chicago. All things know. All things know. We sold our clothes to the state. I don't mind. I don't mind. I've made a lot of mistakes in my mind, in my mind. You know, I think that even encapsulates the bear, right? Like yes, Carmi's life, right? Like he's just, he thinks he's making mistakes all the time. And he he is sometimes, mm -hmm. but he's also not a lot of the time. Um, and speaking of Chicago, <laughs> it's a great time to plug the retreat. <laughs> it is. It's a super fun time to plug the retreat. <laughs> um, this October four through six, we are hosting our second Best Chapter Yet retreat. And if you have never been to Chicago in the fall, you mm. will love it. It's absolutely stunning. There's no prettier place, really. Yeah, really nice. And it's a great backdrop at a really beautiful hotel at a great price. Um, and the end of this month, we um, we are holding to our our investment of 1212 that gets you all the time and the meals uh, except for one night um, with an amazing group of women. And we are so excited about people who are coming already. So if it's yeah. something you're thinking of, if you're not sure about retreats, this is a good starter retreat for you. <laughs> but even if you've been on other kinds of retreats, this is a like a beautiful one that combines, I was, I was just describing this yesterday. It's like, I think Lisa and I together, we complement each other so well. We have the ability to, in a short amount of time, help people feel connected and go deep with themselves and also have a lot of fun. And yeah. who doesn't need that? Absolutely. So just to be clear, depending on when you're listening to this, um, the rate of 1212 stays through June 30th, 2024. Because who knows, you might find this pod five years from now and be like, what the hell are they talking about? Um, and then the rate will go up starting July 1st and we have it open until the end of August. We have to give our numbers in September. So as of September 1, the registration will be closed. And it again is in October 4th through 6th. So the first weekend in October, uh, which could not be a more perfect time to be in downtown Chicago, right on the river. I, I am so excited to go back home. I was just there last year, but I want to go again. I, I pretty much have gone, all, I've gone almost every year since we moved to LA. That's how much I love it. If they just had better weather the rest of the year, I probably would wouldn't even live in LA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you for this. This was fun it's to talk fun. about our TV show. So next it's week, really we're going to talk about some of our favorite films. They might not necessarily be uh, current, uh, although they might be. Um, so we're going to keep this fun. Like, what are we listening? What are we watching? Um, yeah. Theme going for July. Cool. All right. Well, I can't wait. It's going to be fun because summer is always an interesting time. Last summer, it was Barbenheimer. What's it going to be this summer? Huh. You know what? Uh, quite frankly, I don't think it's going to be anything. They are Movies are not doing well this year. I know. So I know. we might touch on Barbie again. I can imagine that might be a thing. All, All right. right. We'll be back next week, everyone. So long.